and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we're introducing our brand new stamp set, Pick of the Patch, and its coordinating dies. We're also going to be introducing the Reveal Wheel Pick of the Patch add-on as well, which is so cool. So let's go ahead and check it out. So first up, we're gonna stamp out the images from this set, and we have these two adorable squirrels. Oh my goodness, I love the one on the right so much. And then we have all of these different styles of pumpkins. So we have kind of a smaller one, a taller one, a medium size, and we also have one that has its lid taken off as well. We've got the pumpkin guts, of course, since we're carving jack-o'-lanterns, and then we have these cute little vines that you can add to the pumpkins and kind of use to help set your scene. And then we have an awesome array of jack-o'-lantern faces. All of these faces are so cute and they're perfect for the reveal wheel because then you can change all of the different jack-o'-lantern faces in the pumpkins. We also have these awesome glasses that you can stamp directly onto the pumpkins or you can die cut them and layer them. We have a solid leaf and an open leaf. We also have a little pumpkin scooper and a pumpkin carving knife. We've got a cute little star that you can stamp in your sky to help set the scene. And then some really fun sentiments. So we have, I've carved out time to say, happy Halloween or you can say happy fall. We also have your beautiful, which just cracks me up, and your the pick of the patch. And we also have have a very that you can put in front of happy Halloween or happy fall. And then my favorite, smile, it's Halloween. Next up, I'm using my Copic markers to add some color to these fun images. And I'm coloring in my squirrels a little bit darker than I normally do because my squirrels are gonna end up being in a night scene. So instead of doing E25, 23, and 21, I've actually added in the E27 and taken out the E21. So I've gone a little bit darker and I think that's really gonna help them kind of look like they're underneath a night sky with a glowing moon. Next up, I'm gonna be coloring the pumpkins and I found my new favorite combination for pumpkins. That YR16 there, I just borrowed that marker from a friend and oh my goodness, I love it. It really adds this great kind of like bright pop of orange to my pumpkins. And so I've colored one pumpkin in solid there, but now I wanted to try something a little bit different that I don't normally do. And I'm gonna do some flicking there to add some texture to my pumpkin with my marker. So you'll see I'm creating kind of like little stripes going into the pumpkin with the different layers of colors and then kind of using my lightest marker to blend over them so that they're not so stark. It's something I'm not used to doing so I can't wait to practice it more but I think it looks really cool and gives the pumpkins kind of a different look. One of the things I love about this set is that it can be used for both Halloween and fall. So as you can see those pumpkins look like fall pumpkins because they don't have the jack-o'-lantern faces on them yet and I think that one with that little kind of flicked stripe texture looks really really cool for fall cards with those cute squirrels. Next up, I'm coloring in the pumpkin guts. So I'm doing those a little bit lighter since those are a little bit of a lighter color in there. And it just cracks me up that we have the pile of pumpkin guts. It's kind of my favorite part. I really like scooping the guts out. Uh, my husband hates it, so we're a good combination because I don't want to carve the pumpkin. I just want to scoop the guts out. I really do like it. <laughs> I'm adding some color, both green and brown, to the stems, and then I'm going to color in the little knife handle green to kind of go along with that. And I feel like those little pumpkin carvers are always that orangey color, so I colored that in as well. Here are the coordinating dies for the set, which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate them. We're going to take those dies and line them up with the stamped images. I'm going to hold them in place with some low-tack tape, it's some post-it note tape, run it through my die cut machine, and then we'll have some awesome perfectly die cut images. I just love popping them out of the dies. And how cute are these? Oh my goodness, that little happy squirrel and all of the pumpkins. Now I'm gonna stamp one of the jack-o'-lantern faces on the pumpkin, which I think is so super cute. And I love that you can kind of mix and match and choose which face depending on how you're feeling. You can create some really cute scenes with the squirrels holding the carving knife and scooper with the little jack-o'-lantern and the guts. You can layer the cute little glasses on top, which is really sweet. And then the little vines can go in towards the top of the pumpkin or also around the bottom of the pumpkin, which I think is a really cute look. It kind of reminds me of Cinderella a little bit. Next up here we have the Reveal Wheel Pick of the Patch add-on, and this one works with the Reveal Wheel and works with the Pick of the Patch stamp set. So there you can see it comes with two dies. We've got our little window there, which is perfect for dropping right into your Reveal Wheel. And then this is the pumpkin from the stamp set that works with the frame. So I'm going to stamp that pumpkin out, and then I can line that frame up and then run that through my die cut machine. So there you'll see now I have my little pumpkin frame. And then now I've got my pumpkin reveal wheel piece. So you can take that frame and line it up top and then add your wheel with the spinning faces. And we're gonna be creating a reveal wheel with this set just in a little bit. 
The other thing I wanted to show you is how cute it is to put the little squirrels inside the pumpkin. So you can have the squirrel be inside the pumpkin and even put the little lid on top of him. And oh my goodness, that makes me smile so much. So now it's time to get crafty with this stamp set. So here I have my stitched hillside backdrop and I'm gonna die cut that from some black cardstock. And so this is gonna be how I'm gonna set my cool little scene here with my pumpkins. I've also taken some cardstock here to five and a half by four and a quarter inches, which is the perfect size to layer behind my hills. And I'm gonna create a fun, spooky sky. So I'm using dusty Concord, seedless preserves, and chipped sapphire. I'm using a foam ink blending tool to bring that color onto the cardstock, and I'm gonna keep adding color until I get kind of my desired brightness. I'm also layering my little stitched hillside backdrop piece over there to make sure that that purple is kind of peeking through. So that was Seedless Preserves. Now here I'm going over with Dusty Concord and I'm making sure to go over the edge of that brighter purple color so that the two really blend together. And then for the top part, I'm going to be using my chipped sapphire. Once again, trying to blend between those edges. I'm then gonna go back to the Dusty Concord to blend between the, the dark blue and the dark purple. And then of course, between the dark purple and the lighter purple and kind of just blending those edges. Here I have a dotted circle and I'm gonna die cut some white cardstock to be the moon for my sky. I'm gonna be using mustard seed and squeezed lemonade and I'm gonna be bringing on the color just like we did for the other one. So I'm using my foam ink blending tool to bring that color on, first the squeezed lemonade and then the mustard seed is just gonna go around the edges of the moon to just kind of darken up the edges and define them so you can really see that cool kind of dotted look which I think looks really cool for a spooky moon. I'm using the new Spooky Fence Border Die and I'm gonna be die cutting that from some of the new Black Sparkle cardstock that comes in the Autumn Collection and that sparkle is so pretty. So I'm gonna run that through my die cut machine and now I have this awesome sparkly fence. I'm also gonna take out some of the new vellum and use my Simple Puffy Clouds dies to cut some spooky clouds that I think are gonna look really, really cool in my scene. We're gonna stamp out some of those cute jack-o'-lantern faces on all of the pumpkins there, and now we can start creating our scene. So one of the things I love about this backdrop die is you can kind of tuck characters in there. So what I'm gonna do is kind of tuck things in and create my scene from there. So I've got my little squirrel with his scooper, and then I've got my jack-o'-lantern that's kind of been carved into, and then gonna give the little squirrel there his little carving knife, and just layer all of these pieces together to create a really cool scene. I'm gonna run some tape on the back of that hill and then I'm gonna layer some of my pumpkins up top there as well and I think it's looking really, really cool. I'm gonna add a little liquid glue there to those cute little eyeglasses and add that to my tall pumpkin. And then we'll go through and add some of those leaves and some of those little vines and tendrils there to kind of help set the scenes. I think the little green leaf looks really, really cool. It kind of goes along with the green carving knife and just adds this really nice pop of color. So I'm gonna add a little tape to the back of my spooky fence there. I'm gonna layer it where I want it to be there on my backdrop. And then I'm gonna put the whole thing down, gluing that spooky fence to my border since I want that to be in the background, just like that. Then I can go ahead and layer my pumpkin behind the spooky fence and onto the background as well. I want this card to have a ton of dimensions. I want there to look like there's pumpkins behind and pumpkins in front. I'm also gonna add one more pumpkin there over to the left because I just thought another pumpkin would just be adorable. And then I'm adding a ton of black foam squares to the back of my whole scene. So now we've got this great dimension going on in there. I wanted even more dimension, so I'm taking some more foam squares and layering them behind the squirrels so that the squirrels really stand out from the card, which I think looks really, really cool. Now it's time for the sentiment, and I thought it would be fun to do some heat embossing. So I'm gonna be stamping in some embossing ink there right onto my black cardstock. Then I'll add some white embossing powder and heat it up with my heat tool so that I have this nice, bright, shiny sentiment that I can layer onto my card. I'm gonna use one of my sentiment banner dies and line that up with my sentiment. I'll hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through my die cut machine, and now I'll have this cute little sentiment with a little flagged end. And I'm just gonna use my scissors to trip off any of the excess. And then I'll add some more foam adhesive since I'm kind of on a foam adhesive kick here to that little panel there and layer that right on top of my card. 
Now, vellum can be tricky because you have to hide your adhesive because you can see the adhesive through that translucent piece of paper. So I'm going to add a little bit of tape runner there right at the moment where my cloud is going to cross over to the moon. And you'll see there that that little die cut edge is going to hide that adhesive. So I'm just going to layer that adhesive and then add that right onto the card. And then for my smaller cloud, what I'm going to use is one of these tiny little micro glue dots. I'm going to layer that right onto the cloud and then I'm going to hide the glue dot behind my little pumpkin leaf there. And you'll see now we can't see the adhesive, but we get that awesome effect of the cool vellum clouds. I'm creating a card base out of black cardstock here that's five and a half by four and a quarter inches. I'll add some adhesive to that card base and layer my whole scene on top. And my spooky Halloween card is all done. I had such a blast making this. I love all of the dimension and the fun spooky sky and vellum clouds. Oh my goodness, and those squirrels just make me so happy. So next up, we're gonna be working on a Reveal Wheel interactive card. So we've gone ahead and stamped and colored out a bunch of images, and we're gonna take that frame die that's from the Reveal Wheel Pick of the Patch add-on, and we're gonna layer that right there with that pumpkin, hold it in place with some low-tack tape, and then run it through the die-cut machine, and we're gonna have a bunch of images that we can play with for our card. We're also gonna use the cute cobweb die and die cut that out of some of the new black sparkle cardstock and those cobwebs look so cool from that. So we're gonna be using the new Reveal Wheel Square add-on. And this add-on helps you make your Reveal Wheel into a square-shaped card. We're then gonna drop in the little pick of the patch Reveal Wheel piece and run that through our die cut machine along with a little stitch rectangle that's gonna become our card base. So here now you're gonna see that we have a reveal wheel base that's a square with a pumpkin window in it. Now we're gonna be using our stitched windy backdrop here to add a little detail, kind of some spooky detail to our reveal wheel piece. So we ran that through the die cut machine and now we have some awesome little spooky winds and we're gonna do that with our stitched rectangle that's gonna be our card base as well. Now, before we get to our reveal wheel making, we have to do some inking. So here we have some faded jeans, blueprint sketch, and black soot distress oxides, and we're gonna layer these onto the card. Now, this card was inspired by an amazing card by Audrey, in which she created a really cool spooky Halloween scene, and we loved it so much, but we thought, wouldn't it be cool if we also added an interactive element to it? So thank you so much, Audrey, for letting us use your card design and kind of turn it into this fun interactive scene. Now here you can see we're adding our blues and then our blacks and layering the colors over each other over and over again until you kind of get the desired look. And by adding that black soot on there, that's what really gives it that cool kind of night sky spooky Halloween look. Now it's time to add some stars into the sky. And to do that, we're gonna use a little pearlized white watercolor here, but some white acrylic paint would also work really well for this. We're gonna add a ton of water so that it's almost kind of soupy. Pick it up with a paintbrush and then tap the edge of the paintbrush so that splatters come out, creating this really, really cool night sky. And this just really makes the card. I think it looks so cool and it's really fun to create those splatters and kind of just have a blast with it. Now it's time to start working on the reveal wheel. So we're taking the large wheel and the wheel base from the original reveal wheel and we're gonna die cut those out of some white cardstock. Then we're gonna set our wheel onto our card. So we're gonna take a little mini brad here and put that through the smaller wheel base. We'll then put the brad through the back of our scalloped wheel there and then we'll open up the prongs of the brad securing those two pieces together. Next, we're gonna add some foam squares to the back of the smaller wheel base circle surrounding that brad. Then we're gonna take that embossed line detail on the outside of our scallop circle there, and we're gonna use that as a guide to line up our wheel. So we're gonna look through that pumpkin-shaped window there, find that embossed line, and shift the die up so that you no longer see it. Then we'll look at the notch side, and once we see the embossed line, we're gonna shift it in until you no longer see it. Now we know the wheel is in the perfect place. We can peel off the little backings there and then layer it onto our rectangular base, just like that. Now our wheel is in the perfect position and we can go ahead and start to decorate it. To give a little guide as to where we're gonna stamp our jack-o'-lantern faces, we're just gonna use a pencil there to trace that pumpkin. So we're gonna trace the pumpkin and then turn the wheel there so that the pumpkin's on the bottom and then trace the other pumpkin. And we're gonna do that so that we have a pumpkin four times on the wheel at 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock. 
Now, if you've never made a reveal wheel before, you should definitely check out our intro to reveal wheel video and we'll make sure to link it below so that you guys can check that out and see the original reveal wheel and then how cool this jack-o-lantern add-on is. Now it's time to stamp those little jack-o-lantern faces. So we're gonna use those pencil lines as a guide and choose a bunch of different faces to stamp onto the wheel. Once we have all of those little faces stamped on there, we can go ahead and erase all of those little lightly drawn pencil lines and no one will ever know that those were there. Now to add some color to the wheel, we're gonna use the same Copic markers that we used to color in the little jack-o-lantern frame that we cut earlier. So we'll just color in that whole wheel so that it all coordinates. We're gonna use the glue tube here to add that awesome little sparkly cobweb there to the edge of the card. And you can see how the spooky scene is being set. And now we're gonna add that little frame that we cut at the beginning as when we were making this card to our reveal wheel window. And now it's really starting to look like a little jack-o-lantern. We've also cut out a little spider there and an arrow as well. Now we're gonna use that same little square add-on die for the reveal wheel to die cut some black cardstock, and then we'll die cut the spooky fence border from that as well. That way it still has that stitch detail so that everything on this card is still lining up. Now it's time to add some cute little glasses to the pumpkin. Oh my gosh, I don't know why, but it cracks me up every time I see the pumpkin like that. And then we can start to create our scene. So it's gonna be super cute because there's gonna be a whole stack of jack-o'-lanterns and then the top jack-o'-lantern is gonna have the interactive element. We're also gonna add some of those little vines and tendrils to the pumpkins as well. And then of course, some really cute squirrels to our scene too. And then we can add the little spider that's from the cute cobweb set right onto the card. And then now we can pop our wheel that we colored earlier back on to the base. So we're gonna pop that wheel on and close those brad prongs and then add a bunch of foam squares all the way around that wheel. And then we can attach the front of the card to that whole wheel base piece. And now you'll see that we've created this awesome interactive element with those cute little jack-o'-lantern faces. To help define the pumpkins, we're gonna use a white gel pen to add some little curved lines around those jack-o'-lantern faces. And then we're gonna take the cute cobweb and just trim off that outer layer there to make it a little bit smaller so that we can layer that on the other side of the card. We've die cut a sentiment banner and then we'll go ahead and stamp our Smile It's Halloween sentiment on there. And then we'll layer the whole reveal wheel piece onto that stitched white rectangle that we created earlier. And I love the contrast of that awesome blue and kind of black sky on the white cardstock. Now it's time to layer that cute little sentiment on there and then add a little arrow so that the recipient knows that it's an interactive card. And this card is all done and how cute is this? Oh my goodness, this would make anybody's day. I love that you can change the jack-o'-lantern faces. It's just so adorable. One of the things that I love about this set is that it can be for Halloween, which is awesome because it's one of my favorite things, but it can also be for fall too. So here we've gone ahead and stamped and colored a bunch of images. We also grabbed some sunflowers from the Happy Harvest set and some leaves from Thanks A Latte. And then this is the nitpicky fall paper. And so we're just gonna kind of look through there and find the right color. And there we've got the perfect green for some tree leaves here. So we're gonna use the Leafy Chi Ragtop to cut that kind of knit green paper and then we've cut the tree from some paper bag cardstock. Here are some picked raspberry, abandoned coral, and mustard seed colors. And I love this idea of a non-traditional sky for this card. So it's got these awesome kind of pinky, orangey, yellowy fall colors. And today we're recreating a card by Kay. So thank you so much, Kay, for letting us recreate your awesome card for the video. So there we're gonna layer on our colors and then go back and forth between the two to blend the edges so that it's this nice kind of gradient color going from pink through orange to yellow. We'll take a little sprayer there and spray the whole card and then use our heat tool to dry it up. And this is gonna add some really cool texture on there. And then we wanted even more texture, so we sprayed it again and then used a paper towel to pick up any of the excess water. And I love how cool that looks. It's even cooler looking in person. Now here we need to create a ground so we have some cilantro cardstock and a stitched hillside border. And so we're gonna cut that there to layer behind our whole tree. So we can add that to our card base just like that. 
And then we can start to layer the other pieces for this card. So there is that awesome like little tree leaf area and I love the knit texture and how it kind of works with the cardstock at the bottom of the card. It looks really cool with that. And then here is a sentiment banner die cut from some black cardstock. We'll stamp with some embossing ink and then add some white heat embossing powder and heat that up so it's nice and shiny and bright and white. Here we've got a card base here that's going to be five and a half by four and a quarter, a standard size. We're going to score that and then just fold that card nice and closed and then we can layer our scene on top of this. Now it's time to layer all the pieces of this card. I love that black sentiment on the card because I love how the black really pops from these awesome kind of neon colors of the card. We'll trim off any excess there and then we'll start to layer these awesome pumpkins, sunflowers, and leaves. So I just love how cute this is turning out. This is a pretty quick and easy card. The only part that took a little bit longer was creating that background, but you could use an awesome pattern paper like that pink argyle that's in the Knit Picky collection, which I think would be really cute too to make this card even quicker, say if you wanted to make a bunch to send to people throughout fall. The finishing touch is to add some extra leaves there kind of falling off of the tree. I just think it looks adorable and this card makes me smile so much. Oh my goodness. And then here we have a look at all of the cards that we created in the video today. So we have an awesome Halloween card. We have a really cool interactive card with the reveal wheel add-on and then a beautiful fall card with a really cool, unique sunset sky. So now let's check out what the design team has been up to with this set. First up, we have an interactive card by Nicole. I love how gorgeous that sky she created is. Here Lynette created a reveal wheel card and I love how she layered the pumpkins around the one that's changing its faces. Shari created a double slider surprise card using this set and is just so cute with that little squirrel inside of the pumpkin. The scene that Elena created is absolutely gorgeous. I love the green, black, and orange together. This card by Kay is so gorgeous and I love how she added that stitch tree border in the background. It's just so beautiful. And here I love how Letitia brought in the haunted house from Happy Haunting to go along with these pumpkins. It's just so sweet. Megan got super creative and combined the faces from Booyah with these pumpkins and added some glow in the dark embossing powder, which is so cool. I love this reveal wheel by Lizzie. That moon that she created is absolutely amazing. Melissa's card is so sweet. I love the fall look that she created with those awesome stitched leaves and the squirrel and the pumpkin. And then this little scene by Shari is just so sweet. I love how she stamped all of those little vines coming out of the pumpkins. This is the card by Audrey that inspired us to create our reveal wheel that we made today. So we just love this card. And then this card by Elise is so sweet. I love that gorgeous sky and the really cool inking that she did on the grass too. This card by Nicole is so pretty. I love how she used one of those new reverse scalloped windows. It looks amazing. And then this fun little review wheel by Yainea is just gorgeous. The little cat with the pumpkins is the sweetest thing. Here is that beautiful card by Kay that inspired us to make ours today. And then here is a really awesome pull tab card where there's a cute little raccoon inside of that pumpkin, which is just so sweet. And then another beautiful card by Megan. She's got the awesome little cat there going along with her interactive reveal wheel card. And then this reveal wheel card by Shari is so much fun. It's really easy to do and just so sweet. So I cannot wait to see what you guys do with Pick of the Patch. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and have an absolutely amazing day. Bye. Thank you.